tonight allows people a release for all the hatred and violence that they keep up inside them. Why don't you guys kill someone tonight? Because we don't feel the need to, Johnny. The first Purge film was incredibly special to me and uh, to the company because it was our fourth low budget, high concept movie. We did Paranormal, then, in, then Insidious, then Sinister, and then The Purge. And I'm often asked, what our favorite movie we've ever produced is. And of course, like a child, I like different ones for different reasons. But I can say that the best experience I had ever was the first Purge, not the first Purge, that's the name of a subsequent movie in the title, but the Purge movie, the original Purge movie. Um, and that was because I've been going around saying, you know, there's really something to this new system of making movies. And everyone thought that that was not true. And everyone thought I didn't know what I was talking about. And when we released The Purge, it took four times but when we released The Purge, that was the first time that people said, wait, maybe this uh, maybe this Blumhouse company can can attack movie making in a different way and make good movies and, and and make interesting movies and edgy movies and subversive movies. And so The Purge, the original Purge movie was really a turning point for me personally, for the company. And um, it's one of the reasons I really love the franchise. The, cra the crazy idea for Purge Night actually came from my wife. I'll preface this with that she's an incredibly smart, sweet woman. She's a doctor and a, she loves people. <laughs> and, uh, but we were driving in Brooklyn and there was a road rage incident where I was driving with her and we were cut off by this drunk driver. I got out. We were, there was fists thrown and chaos and cops. And, and she said to me in anger, she said, oh, I wish we all got one free one a year. And I knew what she meant and it was quite dark and like, oh, honey, that's a, that's a pretty, <laughs> pretty crazy thing to say, but it stayed with me. It stayed with me for years. And then coupling that with, I was living in Paris for a, quite a long time, um, posting my first film and I stayed after that. No Parisians I know had any guns. Literally, I, I didn't meet a Parisian who had a gun. I'd say seven out of the 10 Americans I knew had a gun. So I just started really thinking about the relationship between Americans and guns, and violence, and, and my wife's kind of conceit, this crazy thing she said came into my head. And, and I, I just one day woke up with this idea for a new national holiday. <laughs> just remember all the good the purge does. We'll be fine just like always, no worries, okay? At the time, uh, it was a whole different management team in place uh, at Universal, and there was a lot of nervousness at the, on the studio's part, and we actually had to push the release date. It was weird, we got some notes, strange notes early on from different entities. You know, we give it to various financiers, and they, they were coming back with notes saying, you have to say no nuclear weapons. I'm like, oh, okay. And then we got a lot of notes saying, uh, you have to um, take children off the purge, meaning no children can be killed during the purge. The original movie uh, I showed to some some journalist friends early on, and they both got it. You know, they really they really got the movie. They saw the movie, and they helped make everyone feel more comfortable about releasing the film. But that's that. You know, that was that that was the thing that that not everyone understood originally. These are cautionary tales. You know, we, we the idea is that America has this uh, insane relationship to guns, and we were kind of putting a spotlight on that. The nihilism of the idea is so grand that I think it people's minds go to very dark places, understandably, and they want rules to relegate their dark, their own darkness that they think of. Our sequels, we, we, we invest a little bit more money in because we have a concept that we know um, audiences like. So what was really fun on the second Purge movie was to get to see what it was like outside the house. The first movie, you only experienced the Purge through this family's experience inside. We never got to see what happened outside and what happened with the purgers, what they were really doing. So it was really fun about the second movie and the subsequent movies was to, you know, take our cameras outside at night during the purge and see, you know, the insanity that, that went on out there. In shooting the, the first film, I began to realize the conceit of the purge was so big that I started to become afraid that the audience would be very sad to be inside one house. And we did get that reaction on Purge One. There were people who were like, wait, I wanna see what's happening in the streets of America. So in the conception of the future films, I immediately, in the middle of shooting Purge One, I began to say, okay, we need to open this up. We're gonna have to broaden this. We're gonna have to go higher in the budget. And we're gonna have to hit the streets of America to show what purging looks like out inside the streets and cities of America. In creating the film, yet yeah, there's always been these things that happen over the years that people always come to me saying, how did you know that Hillary was going to be the, the, 
the nominee. And yeah, there were certain things that happened along the way that we kind of predated in the film. And, you know, like as Jason Blum and Sebastian, I always say I'm kind of the Nostradamus of the horror purge world and that whatever I write comes true. And I, I wish that weren't true. I wish they didn't have any kind of resonance in, in the modern world. I, weren't, I wish they weren't mirroring society. I wish we lived in a very harmonious place with no discord and the purge films had no relevance. He's incredible at, at, at somehow predicting what's going to happen. So I, I always said about that movie, uh, we got, for the movie business, we, very, we got very lucky. Uh, as a country, maybe less so. But it was by chance. There's no way James could have known what was gonna what was gonna take place. But each movie that he's written has has somehow, you know, seen into the future and and foretold things to come. I think what shapes the Purge movies is is the society around us. Or the audience that reacted the most, I'd say, to me when I would go to Comic Con, was the Black and Latino audiences, which was great fans of the series. So some people did ask me along the way, did they dictate where we were going? For me, the the series always had the underpinnings. We were always you know, trying to sneak these socio-political ideas into the series. So we were always dealing with racial issues, income disparity, and it seemed to be the appropriate places to go. So it probably was the natural way to go. And then I was kind of pushed by the audience reaction. I think it all happened simultaneously. I think artists should take their experience in the world and pack it into really cool stories, in our case, scary, the scariest horror movies you could make. And I think that's what James does. I think what's new about the Forever Purge is that it takes this idea that there's, that the purge happens in a contained time and blows it out the window. So there's chaos forever and all the rules are broken. The initial conceit for Purge 5 is the strangest thing. So I initially wanted to do a love story and I know that freaked everybody out. I had this image of this couple coming from Mexico, emigrating into America, who were madly in love, passionately in love. Yet they had two different takes on what the American dream was. Does it still exist? If it still exists, who, is it, who does it exist for? At the time, this is two and a half years ago, the border crisis was in the headlines everywhere. That's what we were dealing with in our country. So that's informing everything I'm writing. But I knew I needed more. I knew I needed to flip the concept upside down because I was like, we can't go back to a 12-hour purge. We've done that. People are going to get mad at that. And that's what set everything in motion then. We were able to combine the, the kind of love story and this exploration of the American dream with this very horrific flipping of the purge that it just keeps going because that's what they can see was oh put all the put all the violence of the year into one 12 hour period and everything will be peaceful for the rest of the year you know and then we realize in purge five that that's an impossible thing you cannot contain hatred and violence in that way it just becomes more of a virus that spreads as a kind of comment on the american dream i think i think all the all the movies to a certain degree say the american dream is not all that it's cracked up to be and that's who especially you know in the last uh, year 18 months is something that a lot of people are talking about and thinking about that the american dream as advertised may not be uh, exactly the reality of of the american dream there's no crime anymore anything goes in the initial conceit of all the ideas, I like to always incorporate specifically in that third act some kind of hope, some kind of either I would say we try to end a Purge movie where they're saving a life and not taking a life, whether that be the Edwin Hodge character in Purge 1 where they decide we're not going to kill this man for saving our family. Part 2, the Leo character decides I'm not going to kill the drunk driver who killed my kid. Part 3, they decide not to kill the minister even though he's an evil man. So there's a constant decision to save. Elon is saving the family in Part 4. And now in Part 5, there's the hope of some kind of uh, the Josh Lucas character evolving into something more harmonious, his thoughts. It is definitely designed to end in some place of hope and harmony even in the middle of this extremely nihilistic concept. So we're hoping the audience feels that harmony starting even amidst all the chaos around them. And I'm hoping that infuses some hope into the audience. English, speak! Does this translate? I think it's great to see a movie in a movie theater. I, I don't know if I would use the word important, but I would definitely say it's much more fun. Particularly our movies are just way, way more effective. If you want to be scared, if you want to be the most scared you can be at one of our movies, the way to see the movie and the only way to see the movie is in a movie theater. And that sucks you into what's going on much more profoundly than at home. And when you are sucked in, the ability of, for the movie to frighten uh, is heightened tremendously. The Purge series has meant a lot to Blumhouse in that it's almost the longest running. I, Paranormal Activity, we've, we've, got a, we've got a couple more movies, but it's almost the longest running franchise that we have. And uh, is this the end? You know, I never say, I hope not. I hope not. I would never say never. Uh, everyone's threatening this is the last movie, but you know, my job is to make that not true. So hopefully I'll prevail.